What's up guys and welcome to today's video where we're going to be going over the Ant Miner L3 Plus right here and how to silence this bad boy. So the Ant Miner L3 Plus is a script ASIC and ASIC stands for an application specific integrated circuit. What does that mean? Well, in layman's terms, an ASIC is something that is used to mine a specific cryptocurrency. And the reason we use this instead of a graphics card or a processor is because this thing was designed specifically to mine one thing and one thing only. And it does that very, very well, at least compared to other things. Usually orders of magnitudes better and for significantly less power. So why do I have this? Well, this Antminer L3 Plus is used to mine Litecoin and Dogecoin and other script coins. And I have it because I like to mine and I specifically want to mine these things. And to do it, I need this beast of a machine. Otherwise, uh, I won't be able to compete if I were to use like a graphics card or a processor because the hash rate is just way too low. There's a few downsides of using an ASIC. For one, you can't change algorithms. This thing only does script mining, such as Dogecoin, Litecoin. You can't mine Bitcoin, you can't mine Ethereum with it. It's made for one thing and one thing only. And some of the downsides aside from that are it uses a lot of power, about 800 watts stock, and it's really loud. And so today we're gonna to try and silence this thing because it's in my garage and I can't stand it. It's just too loud. It used to be at my farm, but I had to move it here for some reasons and uh, we just need to silence this thing. So I've been doing some research and I think I've found a solution. So I'm gonna show you guys what you need to do. So first things first, the prerequisites for getting this thing to be quiet is you are going to need to have this on the Hive OS custom firmware. And the reason being is you shave off a significant amount of power and you can even overclock if you want to. So stock settings, this ant miner pulls about 800 to 880 watts for about 500 mega hashes. And with the custom firmware on there, it's pulling about 660 watts for 500 mega hashes. So you lose roughly 200-ish watts, which significantly lowers the heat output of this thing, and you spend less money on electricity. So it's a win-win right there. If you wanted to, you could overclock it to increase your hash rate, but you do lose efficiency. So now that you have it on Hive and you're mining way more efficiently, the fans don't need to run as loud as they did before. And you can try and set fan speeds and things like that, but these Delta fans are notoriously loud. So what I've done is I've purchased the Noctua Industrial PPC fans. These are 3000 RPM PWM fans. What that means is pulse width modulation. And in English, that means you can change the fan speed. So we're gonna try and use this. It's half of the fan speed of that. These run at 6,000 RPM and those fans run at 3,000 max RPM. But with the Hive OS software, we can install those. Normally, if you install aftermarket fans on these ant miners, they will error out. And that's because they're made for these specific fans. But what we can do with this custom firmware is put in new fans and it's going to error but the firmware allows us to bypass the error and it's called immersion mode and you only really use that if you were going to submerge these things in let's say mineral oil and why would you do that well that significantly reduces the noise and it's easier to cool but it also has another side effect aside from turning off that notification or error what it actually allows us to do is remove the fans and use other fans. And with that error message gone, the miner will continue to mine. So we can set our fan speeds manually and then also set another checkbox, which allows us to protect the unit in case of overheating. So we'll go through that later and I'll show you guys how to do it on the Hive page. But for now, what you're gonna need is your Ant Miner L3 Plus or L3 Plus Plus. 
and we're gonna start unplugging it. So we'll zoom in here and I'll show you what we need to do. So first things first, you're gonna wanna unplug the power supply. You're gonna wanna make sure it's also unplugged from the wall. After you unplug it from the wall, the power supply will continue to run for a good 30 seconds or so. Let it spin down completely before you unplug it. These bad boys still have massive capacitors with power in them and we wanna make sure there is nothing while we're working on this to avoid any electrical issues or shocks, anything like that. So let it set down for 30 to 60 seconds after you've unplugged it, once you hear all the noise go away, and then we can start unplugging the mining rig from the power supply. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start here with the hash board. So we'll unplug the hash board, and you don't have to do this in a specific order, but this is just the order that I like to do it. We're gonna unplug the hash board, and then we're gonna start our way from the top of the board down to the bottom. So we're gonna remove the first hash board, then we're gonna remove the second hash board, and then the third hash board, and the fourth hash board. And now, all we're gonna have is the ASIC itself, without any power, no cables, except for the fans and the hash board to the controller. So, after this, we're gonna go ahead and unplug the fan from the controller board and set them aside. After that, grab yourself a small Phillips screwdriver. I'm using my handy iFixit toolkit with a PH2 head attached, and that, I believe, stands for Phillips Head 2. So we're gonna take this off, and then we're gonna start unscrewing this, and we're gonna wanna make sure we know which one we're taking off, because they blow in a certain direction. And if you rotate to if you rotate to the front of the miner, you can see this is actually where the heat comes out and the back is where all the air flows in. After we have the fans unplugged, we're gonna start by removing the four screws at the front of the unit. It's not screwed in very much, and so just a little bit and they come loose pretty easily. Remember the orientation that the fan was on the ASIC? There'll be a little arrow showing you which direction airflow is moving. My personal opinion is to move this to the side and have it sit in a way that you know which way the air is flowing. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. Now we're gonna flip over to the back and we're gonna do the same thing, removing the four screws from the fan. Now we should have the ASIC completely fanless. The next step, it's completely up to you, but this is what I prefer doing. We're gonna have to remove this metal panel. And the reason we're gonna have to remove it is because these screws are way too long for the knock to a fans. With this fan here, if we were to put it on and try to screw it in, this screw would go straight through and into the hash board. A demonstration of what it would look like on the inside is something like this, where it's protruding. It should only be out this much, or probably less, something like this, just enough to hold on. We don't want any contact between the screws and the hash boards for chance of shorting something. And so what I've decided and come up to do is to use this, but in reverse, and stick the screws outward. Now you're thinking to yourself, how is that gonna hold the fan? Well, I've already thought of that. And so what I've gone ahead and purchased are some nuts from Home Depot that match the screws on the ASIC miner. And I'll have all of this down below, that way if you guys wanna do the same thing, you'll know exactly which parts you need. And so, we're gonna go ahead and remove this back panel first. And word of the wise, if we remove this back panel, there is a screw here that will void your warranty. If you somehow still have a warranty on this device, proceed with caution. Most of these were created in 2017, meaning they no longer have warranty. As this unit itself is no longer in warranty, 
I have no problem modifying it, but some people are squeamish of removing their warranty when it's still around. If you don't want to tr void your warranty with Bitmain, then don't unscrew those. These are not legally binding in the US, however, these were made in China and Bitmain might tell you to pound sand. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws. After you've removed all the screws, the back plate should come off fairly easily. Now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna put the screws in going outwards. That way, nothing touches the inside of the mining rig. If we screw these all the way in, there's only gonna be a little bit of the screw left protruding out afterwards. Once we have that completed, it should look something like this. This is the point where we were gonna take the fan, make sure to line it up with the arrow as we went over, and we're gonna make sure for this that the air is flowing inwards. So I'm gonna face my fan this way. I'm going to grab the fan and line up the holes and put it right through. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit sticking out. And this is what I meant by if we were to put the fan, not this way, but if, if we were to screw in the fan, the normal way that the ASIC had the fans, this much would be protruding, and it is enough to touch the boards, at least from the one that I did. And that is not okay. So we're gonna have it set up this way. We're gonna have a little bit of screw sticking out, and the way to fasten this down is actually to use these nuts. And I'll have the nuts down below in the description. That way you guys know which nuts to purchase. After you have that completed, it should look something like this. With the nuts on the screw, the fan is not going to go anywhere. We can now take this and attach it back to the PCB like such. And now that we're back on, we're gonna take those little screws that we had before, and we're gonna put them back into their spots, securing the end of the mining rig back on. And now that we have this side done, we're gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. So we'll catch you when I get all of that done. So now that we have the fans completely installed on both sides, there's one last thing we need to do before we can plug these shiny new fans in. And that is removing the protective bumps on the fan. Otherwise it will not fit on the fan controller. And that's because Bitmain put their protective bumps on other spots. That way people would not be able to plug in their fans without breaking the controller. So the easiest way to do this is to grab a sharp knife-like object and cut it away. So we're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you how I do it. And these bumps right here are what we're gonna need to remove. So I'm gonna be using my handy Gerber multi-tool that I used in my previous video. Like I said, I use it for a lot of things and pull out the knife portion. Now with that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take the blade and set it like this and cutting down until it's completely been removed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice it away. And I'm just gonna keep slicing as such until it's flat or flat enough that it will fit on top of the controller without any real problems. Now, once you have it fairly flat, it should be pretty flush and you can just run your hand over it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be good enough that it'll fit on the ant miner without any problems. After you've cut enough of it off, take the fan header and feel where the bumps were. There is this white line here. You're gonna wanna line these up to make sure the power is flowing into the fans correctly. Doing so can cause some harm to the fans and potentially the hashboard. So like I said, make sure to line the bumpy side up with this bar right here and take it and then go ahead and plug it in. After you have both fans connected to the controller board and being very careful not to cut yourself, you are ready to plug everything back in. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna grab the power supply and we're gonna start plugging things back in the way we did. So once you have everything plugged in and you're ready to power it on, 
make sure that you have a computer nearby. You're gonna wanna go in and turn off the fan error within the HiveOS custom firmware. And I'm gonna show you how to do this and we're gonna need the IP address of this miner. And the way to get that, I usually use the port scanner tool in Windows. If you don't know what the IP address is, if you go into HiveOS, at the top it will tell you the IP address of the miner. So make sure that this is on the HiveOS custom firmware, otherwise you will not be able to proceed. If it is not on the HiveOS custom firmware, make sure to click on the link down below and follow the instructions from HiveOS to get that set up. So now we're gonna go ahead and connect the miner to power and data. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ethernet cable and power and plug it in. Once you plug it in, the fans are gonna to start to spin up. The ASIC shouldn't start mining because the fans are gonna error out. On this, I've already turned off the fan control, so I'll show you how to do it here on the computer. First, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to the IP address of the miner. So we're gonna to wanna to go into the miner config and under general settings, this is where we're gonna be able to change the fan speed settings. As you can see here, I've already checked the customize the fan speed percentage option and the disable fan check. And what that is going to allow us to do is use the custom fans that we've added without throwing up error message and stopping the miner. Another thing we're going to want to do is stop running when the PCB temperature reaches 80. And that's because we don't want the mining rig to overheat in case one of the fans die. So even if you don't do this fan mod, I highly recommend doing this. Now you can choose the fan speed percentage. I've chosen 70 for this because it's still going to be out in my garage. But as you can tell, I'm speaking over it and it is not that loud. It is significantly quieter than when we were at before. After we check that, we're going to come down here and click save and apply. It's going to take a, a second for it to apply. After you did that, you might need to reboot the ASIC before it takes effect and shows up in the hive pool. But as you guys can tell, this thing is significantly quieter than when we started earlier. I can keep this in my living room or the kitchen if I want, and it won't disturb me while I'm sleeping or editing slash gaming in the den. Now, according to this, we're sitting at about 50. Now with me speaking, it's actually going to 70 to 80. And uh, we go from a quiet home to a quiet street. If I shut up for a second, you guys can see the actual decibels that is coming out of the mining rig. Sounds like a jet engine in here. And this is quieter than it was before. I think for me personally, this is a huge success. I can now use this ASIC miner in a home environment without rigging up any crazy external vents, pipes, or a cooler solution by literally taking this and shoving it into a cooler. With just changing these fans and using the custom firmware, I'm able to mine at home. And I'm hoping this helps you guys also. Maybe now you can actually use this mining rig in your house without people complaining when they come over if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up down below and leave some comments if you have any questions or concerns. Leaving a comment is the best way to get in touch with me. And like always, we'll catch you guys in the next video.